From the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, and the majority of my scriptures will come from the New International Version, you will find these words, for it is by grace, and grace is the unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor of God. Just keep in your mind, grace is the favor of God. I didn't earn it. I didn't do anything to deserve it. It is just God gifting us. For, by, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Listen to this. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. I'd like for you to reach out and catch your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, neighbor. Celebrate. celebrate, your story has benefits. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Greet somebody else and say, celebrate. celebrate. Your story has benefits. Now let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> celebrate. Your story has benefits. We have established in the past, in its simplest form, hip hop is a story that is told to music. Originating in the 70s by those young and passionate, hip hop is the storyline for artists who even today, often at times in crude ways, speak of the spills and ills, the pain and shame, the desolation and devastation experienced by a segment of the American population that feels isolated from the dreams, aspirations, and opportunities of the mainstream American population. Now, though hip hop was started by the young, it's not just for the young. Remember those young folks who started hip hop in the 70s are today somewhere around 50, 60, or 70. And so hip hop is not just for young folks, but it is a platform for folks of all ages. Some folks have done really good with hip hop. I mean, if you know Jay-Z, if you know Dr. Dre, I mean, they've done pretty good with, with, with hip hop. Now, they're talking about the NFL, even considering buying a team. I mean, I mean, some folks have done really well with, with, with hip hop. Now, on the flip side, holy hip hop is also for folks of all ages. You don't need to shy away from that. Sometimes I, I, I hear folks with a little age on them acting like they, they don't know what's going on. Listen, I mean, almost any movie you watch has some form of hip hop in it. Uh, almost any music you listen to, whether you realize it or not, has some form of hip hop in it. And so you don't want to shy away from it. You just want to put a little holiness with the hip hop. That's why we call this Holy Hip Hop Sunday. Holy hip hop is the story of abundant life as a result of fallen humanity being reconciled to God through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In essence, holy hip hop is a story of victory through Jesus Christ in spite of the attacks by the Antichrist. You see, I believe good, bad, or ugly. Life is more about choice than it is about chance. Choosing Jesus as your Redeemer, Savior, ushers us into the abundant life. And so as a believer, in spite of the odds against you, you have been given a new lease on life. The scripture calls it born again. And along with your new life, you have a new story that you need to tell and others need to hear. You don't want to dummy down your relationship with Jesus Christ. You are a unique vessel. You are a cut above the rest because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I want to give you three points that are needed as you tell your story. Turn to someone else and say, you need to tell your story. You need to tell your story. The first thing, the first point I want to give you, make sure you actually communicate your story. Communicate your story. Communication is simply sending a clear message, receiving a clear message, and applying the message. The Bible says on the back of chapter 2, verse 2 from the King James Version, it says, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. 
Now that verse is extremely needful in this era, era of communication. One of our primary means of communication, of communicating is through text messaging. You know, most of you in here send text messages. Praise the Lord. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Text, can I get a hand? Let me see. All right. Every now and then we have some folks that they don't text yet. You know, some folks are not using iPhones or Androids. They're still using flip phones. And, you know, we're okay with that. Praise the Lord. But most of us are texting. And unlike in the past when we spelled out our words and double checked the meaning of our words, today we just want to get the message out. And so we use a lot of abbreviations and shortcuts or acronyms to convey our message. An acronym is a shortened form of a phrase usually made up of the initial letters of that phrase. And so it's not uncommon to get a text that says FYI for your info or GM. Good morning. Oh, LOL, which means laugh out loud. Praise, praise the Lord. Or OMW, on my way. Or IOW, in other words. Or BTW, you know, book of T, you know what I mean, you know. <laughs> By the way. Or IMO, in my opinion. Or EOD, end of destruction. Or NYOB, none of your business. Or. TBC to be continued. The list goes on and on and on. Now, we don't want to take anything away from the acronyms used in texting, but as believers, we too have acronyms that can share our faith. Things like, you know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Or Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Or Man, make a difference. Or ASAP, always stop and pray. A dog. Depend on God, or T-G-I-F, thank God I'm forgiven, <laughs> or Gap. <laughs> See, we can, we can dictate this narrative. Gap, God answers prayers. Faith, forsaking all, I trust him. P-T-L, praise the Lord, or kiss. Keep it simple, thanks. <laughs> Recently I saw him. I, I've seen t-shirts and folks that, that have written on it, God is dope. God is dope. And I was trying to think, okay, what is that? What is that an acronym for? And so I went to find out what is dope. And what, is the, what is that an acronym for? And guess what? I couldn't find anything. So I, I put my own acronym together. Dope. God is dope. Divine option promoting eternity. Glory to God. There are a lot of options out there, but none of them be God because God is divine. He, and he is the divine option that's promoting eternity. That's where we're going to spend our eternity with him. My point is, as believers, we can in many ways manage or even direct the narrative. We can point folks to Jesus through our text messages. Now, it doesn't matter whether you use full words or acronyms. You have to be sure that when you send a message, it is clearly sent and clearly received so that it can be clearly and correctly applied. Communication is a learned behavior. Sometimes the smallest things make the biggest difference. I recently told the story of a young bride that was coming home from a business trip when she found a bracelet that was on sale 50% off. It was $4,000, but the bracelet was on sale for $2,000. Clearly, that was a big ticket item. So she immediately texted her husband for approval on such a large purpose, they purchase. They had agreed that they wouldn't make big purchases without uh, coming together and agreeing on it. Immediately, he texted her back, no! <laughs> Cost too much. About three hours later, she made it home, gave him a big kiss and showed him the bracelet. He says, what is that? She says, that's the bracelet you said I could buy. He says, I did not say you could buy that. He says, you need to take it back. She says, I can't, it's not refundable. You said I could get it. He said, I did not read the text. So she read, read, read it and she realized what happened. When she asked him, could he buy it? In his haste, he responded, no, cost too much. But watch this, he left out the comma. And so his message said, no cost too much. <laughs> Needless to say, my wife loves this story. Are you all there? She loves this story. When it comes to communication, sometimes 
Something as simple as a comma changes the entire meaning of what you intend to say. And so as you communicate your story, be careful and prayerful that you send a clear message, receive a clear message, so that that message can be clearly and correctly applied. Number two, you want others to communicate your story. You want to communicate your story, but you want others to communicate your story as well. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. Watch this. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. In other words, as believers, folks are going to see what we do and communicate what we do. You may not want people talking about you, but they're going to talk about you if they live. Therefore, what we do should be what we should be doing. Come on, come on. Am I working with anybody here? Every believer has a story to tell, even our young believers. And we have to realize our youth are not just our church for tomorrow. They are also our church for today. And if we don't mentor them and minister to them properly today, tomorrow is going to be a disaster. It doesn't matter what age you are. As a believer, God is counting on you to represent. The same person we see in church is the person we should see when church is over. We shouldn't have any of our kids come communicating a message in their bathroom with no clothes on. Come on, Am I talking to three people in here? We shouldn't have profanity going over, you know, through their text messages. Do you understand what you do at 15 is going to be around when you're 55? I often tell young people, be careful about how many tattoos you put on your body. Because see, right now your body is tight. Somebody say tight. Right now it's right. You think you're God's gift to the universe. You think you're that fat. You think, listen, can't nobody tell you nothing. But 40 years from now, that stuff's going to start sagging. And whatever tattoo is tight today is going to be wrinkly tomorrow. I just I say that. I don't know. It's not in my notes. God is, is counting on you being the same person out of church that you are in church. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah. Listen to the words of Paul to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. He says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for believers in your speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Just because you're young, they can't put you out to pastor, tell you to sit down and be quiet. If God has given you an anointing, you need to use that anointing. Folks are going to talk. Paul tells Timothy and us, give them something good or righteous to talk about. Folks should never be talking about how mean you are. They should never talk about uh, how drunk you are. They should never talk about you tipping out of somebody's house. You know you got no business being in, 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 in that house. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? And, and as young people, you got to be so very careful the message that you're sending today because whatever message it is, they're going to talk about it. The story is told of four teenagers from a church youth group driving home from a party that they never should have attended in the first place. Am I talking to anybody here today? Anybody ever been to a party you shouldn't have been? Can I get people to be real for a minute? And just because your granddaughter's sitting there, let her know I'm, that, 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 that I know what I'm talking about. They shouldn't have been at the party in the first place. Beating past a police car, the officer pulled them over. The driver, who was 18, told the others, let me do all the talking. Let me do all the talking. When the officer reached the car, the driver kept his right hand on the steering wheel and handed the officer his license, insurance card, and registration card with his left hand. Watch this. With the dome light on in the car, the other boys lowered the windows and raised their hands to put the officer at ease. I'm helping you right now. Listen, you're not trying to find out why they're stopping you. Not right now. You can do that later. You want to make sure that that officer is not feeling um, 
intimidated in any way. So let the windows down, all the guys in there, lift your hands up, turn on the lights, amen, so the officers can see your hands. The guy that's passing out the car, keep one hand on the steering wheel, pass the other information out with the other hand. Watch this. Remember when you stop, both those in the car as well as the officer are likely nervous. But the difference is this. The officer has a gun. And you're not trying to prove a point right then. If you feel you're mistreated, get his badge number, get the number off of his car, but it is not the time to show what you're made of at that time. Am I helping anyone here today? All right. I just thought I'd give that little lesson. The officer began to talk to the driver. He said, young man, I clocked you going 50 in a 30 mile, 35 mile per hour zone. The young man said, officer, my speedometer said 35, it must be broken. He turned to the other boys and said, is that right, fellas? One of the boys in the back seat quickly said, no, sir. John always drives fast. <laughs> While writing him the ticket for speed, he went on to say, huh? He said, young man, you're not wearing your seatbelt. He said, yes, sir, officer. I took it off when you stopped me. Once again, he turned to those in the back seat. He said, is that right, boys? Once again, the same boy said, no, sir, officer. John never wears his seatbelt. John is really upset at this point. While the officer is writing a ticket for not wearing his seatbelt, John looks in the mirror and clearly threatens the boy in the back seat. The officer says to the boy being threatened, he really seems upset with you. Is that common? No, sir, the boy said. No, sir. He only gets upset like this when he's been drinking. <laughs> Now you talk about a messed up situation. That is a messed up situation. Now, I know a lot of folks would be really upset with that boy in the back seat. See what I mean? You know what I mean? Just talk too, talk too, do talk too much. But he was put in an odd position. When asked a question, he either had to say something not true or nothing at all. And I don't know how either one of those would have worked successfully in that situation. Instead of crucifying the backseat passenger, how about the driver giving him something else to talk about? Remember, he's from the church youth group. He gave the information, he gave the wrong information to his backseat passenger. Watch this. What happened? if they don't go to the party. And the driver doesn't speed while driving. And he puts on his seatbelt. And he doesn't drink and drive. Then the backseat passenger never speaks to the officer. And if so, his conversation about the driver would have been so very different. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, as believers in Jesus Christ, regardless of your age, God is counting on us to structure or develop a story in which those around us will be edified and he will be glorified. A story that others can communicate. Folks are going to tell your story, whether you like it or not, whether it is good, bad, or ugly, they're going to tell your story. If you don't want an ugly story, then don't do ugly stuff. And that brings me to my, to my third and my final point. As believers in Jesus Christ, your story has benefits. If it's the right story, it has benefits. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Brothers and sisters, that's benefits. I'm not perishing. I'm going to have eternal life. Do you get that? And so you need to tell folks, well, why, why are you in Christ? Well, because I'm going to have eternal life. That, that's one of the primary reasons I'm, I'm going to have. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going to have eternal life. <laughs> now, that may not mean anything to you right now, but when, when, those, when that clock is ticking down, you get ready to check out of here, eternal life is going to be everything to you. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
your story has benefits. The mere fact that I have Jesus, I have access to the Father. I don't have to understand it, and you don't have to believe it. I, I, listen, I'm not trying to fight folks to believe it. If they want to believe something else, that's on them. I know one thing. I got a story. I got a Savior. And with that story and with that Savior comes benefits. Yeah. What about John 10? Jesus tells us the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might and enjoy, they might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So I've got benefits. In Jesus Christ, I can have the best of both worlds. I live well now and I've got the thought of eternity when this life is all over. Your story has benefits. And what about verse 8 of our text? For it is by grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor, you have been saved. Turn to somebody and say, I'm saved. I'm saved. If you're not saved, you need to get saved before this service is over. Praise the Lord. It is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. The story is told of a man who dies and he goes to meet Peter at the gate of heaven. Peter informs him that he needs 100 points. To get in. Peter asked the man, tell me, why should I let you in? So the man says, well, I grew up in the church and was faithful to the church all my life. Peter said, praise the Lord. That's five points. Five points. Well, the man said, I never smoked or drank or chased women. I got married and never cheated on my wife, not even in my heart. Woo! Peter said, that's, that's commendable. That's worth five more points. The man is getting nervous about this time. He says, well, I tithed of all that I received and gave to the poor. Peter looked at him and he says, you remarkable. He says, that's five more points. At this point, this man has no idea what he can do because in his mind, he's told him all the best stuff he's got to tell him. So he closed his eyes and he started to pray. He said, God, I need your help. So many times we're stuck in a, in a bad situation simply because we're trying to figure it out without asking God to help us out. He says, God... I need your help. Give me what to say. Suddenly it dawned on him. And he looked at Peter and he said, Peter, I'm undone. I've got nothing else to give. I realize the only way I'm going to get into heaven is by the grace of God. Peter looked at him and smiled and he said, you know, you're right. Because of the grace of God, come on in. Woo. Brothers and sisters, the greatest desire of all mankind, I don't care who they are or where they, where they live, the greatest desire of all mankind is to get into heaven. Hallelujah. Cultivate the gifts that God has given you because if the grace of God can get you into heaven, it can get you into the first chair in your school band or a starting position on your school team or develop and promote all of your righteous dreams. If you... If grace can get you into heaven, work to enrich your gifts because it can get you into Parkland, into ISU, SIU, and U of I too. Trust God and do your best and grace will do the rest. You will pass the bar. You will excel, excel at the past program and every other program from elementary school, middle school, high school, GED, and any other degree until you get your PhD. If grace can get you into heaven, then it will lead you to the right career, the right car, the right house, even the right spouse. If grace can get you into heaven, is there anything too hard for God? So communicate your story. You want others to communicate your story. And because of the grace of God, celebrate because your story has benefits. Give him praise, give him glory, and give him honor in the house of God today.